Welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan, for episode 35, with me, Mr. Sealy P. I am down by the poplars. And, if I go to here, I'm going to buy a plot of land. This one just here. The poplars, as you can see, run all the way along here. I've been looking at my wood chip options, and I'm going to go with the wood chip pellets, the wood pellets I've done before. Um, on Griffin, I think I did them. Because I need something to do with the wood chips. I could just sell them. I don't know how many we're going to end up with. We'll put a load in, um, and then wood chips can be produced. I want to, do, I want to do the poplars. Like I said, I could just sell the wood chips, but we'll put a production chain in. Um, I am cashing in my chips in more ways than one. This is going to be the final episode. I'm going to get the poplars done. Always up. We'll check out the farm, make sure everything's good to go, and it all seems to be all right. Everything's running fine. We've got productions going all over the place, and. The farm is pretty much self-sustaining now. I really should mulch the cotton fields that we finished in the last episode. Apologies for that. I, I When I was filming, in my head I thought I'm up to sort of 70, 80 minutes, if not more, of footage. I've got to get that down to under 60. I thought I'd recorded a whole section of time-lapse that I was going to put to music of the cotton harvest. Came to edit it all and it hadn't recorded, or I didn't hit record, or I'm not quite sure what I'd done wrong. Um, I like doing those when you do them to music and you cut between the different views of the machines and that kind of stuff. So yeah, it ended up being like 45 minutes long, which wasn't my intention, so I do apologise. Anyway, this plot of land here, I'm going to buy. It's not very expensive, I don't think. 33,000. We can afford that. And on here, we're going to place the carpentry. So we could do furniture and stuff here if we wanted to, but it does the wood pellets. This is um, going to be supplied and installed by Cookie Cat. Like I said, I've used it before. And then we're going to go and get a forage harvester with a header. Now, the header, I said I'm going to use the Lizard Pop 6X, which is a 6-metre uh, poplar header. And if you haven't done poplars, again, if you're new to the game, you might not be new to the game. You might not have just done poplars. Um, they, they've taken a long time to grow, that's for sure. So I'm probably going to put it up here in this corner because it's an entire grass field as well. The other thing I should do and could do before I leave as well is do a whole load of mowing and collecting of just grass um, because all the grass I had stored for the sheep, I um, used my little production facility up there and put onto grass silage because I, would, I knew I would need more silage for the cows plus all the silage barrels I've got and I forgot about it skip through a couple of months so I've got over a million litres of silage but my grass is now down to about 300,000 litres which is, is plenty for the sheep I've got so I mean I don't know I'd end up doing a whole load of jobs that I technically don't need to do so yeah that's a wrap so I'm going to put it in just here there we go that'll do nicely I could do a bit of landscaping because we're going to need our access to it so we can come in off the road or the track just here and we can probably squeeze down the side around the front and then come back around the back so I'm gonna do you know what I don't I don't I've said this before I don't do enough of this really um, and probably should do some people's whole channels are landscaping and uh, time lapses of building farms and that kind of stuff and I don't really show it enough uh, so what I'm gonna do is go along to our landscaping painting I need the one that matches up with that one, which I think might be that one, potentially. Do a little check, just in case I'm wrong. Yeah, it looks like it matches up pretty much. So we'll come from here, open that up a little bit. We can curl around. I'm eating into the grass, but only a little bit. It's a, it's a fairly big grass field, in all honesty. I've... Um, I've got grass fields, I've got plenty of grass around. Going a little bit too wide there, that's better. God, grass is thick, isn't it? This thing's a, this thing's a cut. And then what we'll do, where it will let us, we'll kind of just blend a little bit. It won't let us do too much, but I 
I don't like I don't like sharp edges, so I'll kind of there we go, we'll do that a little bit. So this is where it should all um take a clip of that off and go that way. There we go. So a little bit that way. It's all right. That will do. Go that way a little bit as well. Give us a bit of turning room. Go across there. I think what I might do is go wide here because I'm pretty sure the pallets spawn to the side here. And if I want to bring a trailer on alongside to load up, I'm going to want to go wider. So I think what we'll do is we'll come out a bit further like that. Which could allow us to bring a trailer down the side if we want. There we go. That's better. Just feels like it fits in there a little bit better now. We can do some more tweaking to that. There we go. So, the carpentry's in. Now this should run and can run as a regular carpentry. So we can do furniture wood, furniture planks, but we've got the pellets wood chips. So it's wood chips we're going to have. I just don't want to leave them. Like I say, I haven't put them all in. They're taking so long to grow. I said when I planted these, I, I got a little bit too close to the road. As you can see, we're right on the edge of it. And here I think we encroached just a little bit so what we're going to do now is go to the store uh, we're going to get a forage hub so now I, there was I mean there's a heap of forage hubs there's tons of them I looked at all the various different ones there's the John Deere one you know there's some there's some really fancy ones but something that caught my eye um, and something I say a little bit different but that I thought might be nice to give a go is on the lookout for as I always am you know when we get to a point like now I've got over a million we were up at a point where we had, was it, 4 million or something, and I said we'd spend most of it. We got down to 89,000, then I had to skip ahead to my cotton harvest, and with our milk, and our eggs, and all the stuff that we're doing. Oh, I've worked out what the egg problem was. You know, I said about in the last episode, that I was getting that message coming up saying no more space for egg boxes. In my haste to prepare for the cotton harvest, that morning, when I cleared all the animals, um, all the feed out, and I moved all the various different pallets to where they needed to be moved to, fed the animals, I cleared out three of the um, chicken sheds, but not the fourth one. I thought, I mean, it was weird, because when I went to sell the eggs, I'm thinking, I'm sure every every month I've had more eggs than this. Um, turned out the one, the fourth one, I didn't empty. So that was completely full. The message was coming up every hour. There was no more space, um, because there wasn't any more space. I, I, I thought I was going mad. And then when I went over there to check, yeah, it was completely full of eggs. So uh, we had a load more. I put them all into the silo. Um, what was I saying? Oh, just about the money. Yeah, so anyway, in, in looking at now, I could afford to lease, buy, whatever I want to, which is fine. But I'm always on the lookout for stuff that when you're starting out and you want to do a project or you want to do something and you think, oh, the thing is, I can't afford to now. I'm always looking out for things that are cheaper. Options that you can go with um, so you can tackle some jobs even we haven't got a huge amount of money so under forage harvesters we've got our kind of standard fare you know 380 395 449 452 you know they're not cheap to buy leasing not so bad i mean if we look at the leasing prices 515 for the, the big x 1180 there was always the rostelmash one that was a lot cheaper which i liked if we look at that one and go to lease 26 grand you know it's not cheap 
Now, the other thing I was going to say was, it was mentioned by a couple of people, actually. When I said in that other episode, if we go back to leasing, so the base cost is 10300 Per work day is 5150 and per work hour is 10815 So that lease cost is the base cost per work day and the first hour. Now, I had people messaging me saying, when I'd said about on Carpathian... Um, that you've got to bear in mind that when you're leasing something like this, every hour there's going to be the hourly rate. I was told categorically that, no, you've bought that, you've got that for a day. That's not the case. That per work hour, every hour that you've got that machine, you'll get charged that 10850 I've been playing the game a long time. I'm, I started second-guessing myself. I was questioning what I was doing. I said, you know, absolutely that's what happens. You don't get charged the base cost again, and if I don't return the vehicle, and when I go into the next work day, I'll get charged another 5150 because I'm keeping hold of it for another day. I won't get charged the base cost again, but every hour I've used that machine, and that's not in-game hours, that's work hours. The machine will start racking up hours. As you go past one, you get charged another 10000 That's how it works. Um, yeah, I was a bit puzzled. Uh, but like I say, whenever Peter, I set, get messages sent, and I'll stop and think, have I, am I, okay. have I got this wrong? And then I think, oh, no, I haven't got it. I'm, I know I haven't got it wrong. Anyway, so yeah, I just thought I'd address that. Come out of there. So what I've got is this that I found. These are by uh, Ead123. I think there's about three or four different variations. So this is the, the Jaguar 695. 60 grand for a forage harvester. So if you're starting out and you're thinking to yourself, actually, I wouldn't mind doing a bit of forage harvester work, whether I want to do uh, a corn silage or I want to do all crop work or whatever you want to do, that's not a bad alternative. There's there's trailed ones and there's smaller ones and there's stuff, but I like the look of this. I think it's a cool looking bit of kit. So 316 horsepower. 326, 342, 410. 410 horsepower adds another four grand on, so that's 64 grand for 410 horsepower. That's going to get the work done. Um, options for tyres and stuff are fairly limited, I guess, but then forage harvesters, generally speaking, you don't have to worry too much, I don't think personally, but um, I think I'm going to stick with Michelin. Additional weight. Do I want additional weight on that? I might do to balance the header. No, actually, I'm going to leave it. Okay. Silage additive tank. Now, that only works if you're doing grass work, as far as I'm aware. Doing poplars is not going to make any difference. Unlicensed plate option. Now, I'm going to come back out of there because I want to double check. So it shows wood chip there. Chaffing, grass, wood chip. Yeah. I want to make sure. So what should happen now? So we go back to that. I was going to go to Michelin, wasn't I? Uh, additional weight, no. And I will lease that. So leasing it, 3,264 compared to 26 grand. Per work hour, 1,344. Per work day, 640. That's, that's it. I just want to give it a go. Now, as far as headers go, I said about using the Pop X. So that there is your usual poplar header. Two meters wide, 25 grand. It takes a while to get poppers done, you know. But if we come all the way out to here, the pop X, pop 6X, that's a six meter. That's three times what the other one is. Again, quick maths. You like that? That's good, wasn't it? 42.5. Brands. We can go with class. We can change our main color to make it more class esque. I might leave that white actually. Uh, rim color. We'll go for actually it's class on there. Russell Mash Red, Crane Mary. Hmm. It's difficult really. Let's just go for a mm, Yeah that'll do. So we'll lease that. So about six grand all in. And even buying it. Quite scary when you think, oh, actually I'm just looking at that header now thinking that header looks absolutely massive massive. I should have put that weight on, shouldn't I? I didn't realise how small, I mean, yes, it's small, it's 60 grand. I didn't realise how small it's going to be, but... No, that's all right, it's gone, they're fine. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I like this. This is going to be one of my new favourite forage harvesters, I think. 
yeah there are fancier ones and bigger ones and that kind of thing but I have to say bang for your buck let's get our beacons on beacons beacon please no traffic please no traffic fingers crossed fingers crossed come on continue the police car sitting up there again watching everything I do like a hawk um could have given me a police escort oh, really No. Right, past the bridge, let's just put it there. Oh no, we're going to have one of these, like I had the last episode with the lorry. About 500 cars will come at the same time. Go. So the thing I'm hoping now is, pipe out, I can hook up to one of these trailers and then we can just swap them over. 30,000 is each, like I don't know how much we're going to get. So this is about where I left off. Um, <laughs> it may not seem like it to you. Um, I was recording this, this part, this morning, about 8 o'clock in the morning. And um, my internet went down. I literally hit save on the game. I paused my recording, saved that, and then bang, lost connection. Turns out Virgin Media, my internet provider, was doing maintenance across the network locally and the internet was then down from 8am to 2pm. <laughs> I'm so glad I saved it when I did. Could have been a nightmare. Anyway, what are we doing? Are we going to get on this? Move this out of the way. Hook up to a trailer. Let's disconnect the rear one. So at least it's already disconnected. Let's move that forward. And let's see how this works out. Hoping it's going to be fine. I'm loving this. So, will it hook up? No reason why it shouldn't. Oh, new beauty. So, with a six meter. Because when I planted, I planted with a six meter cedar. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be just enough or whether or not. I might have to do it two passes, but we're, I think we're going to get a fair bit. Well, let's say we're about to find out, aren't we? Let's turn that on. Yeah, I think I might have to come back and do it. I'm not going to get all of it. So I'll do another pass back. Oh, that's actually that's amazing. This harvester is actually having no bother with it whatsoever. 60 grand? Staggeringly good. Now I have been around here removing fences every now and again when I've had a bit of, a bit of spare time. <laughs> What's that? But um, yeah, I've removed a few fences here and there. When I've been doing mowing mainly, kind of made sense a few times because this was in other words plots of land it was kind of part of what was owned you know by the um i would say the county but the municipality so this whole section could be cut but it was fenced in so with permission we just took the fences down I want to get this done before it gets dark. I've already got that up by the farm. That weird, um, not weird, but that noise you get. I don't know what the animals are. It's not cicadas, but it's um, that evening kind of chirp. It's only 20 past one in the afternoon. Which is a double one. Just 
drangle that in as we take it down the line. I'll do this one. I'll swing that side of the side. Tied it up and I'll dump what I've got and we'll get some pellets underway. So I could just I could just tell it's actually I haven't even checked. Um oh, the other thing I was saying, you know what I was saying in the last episode about cotton, um about the price of it. What's interesting on here, what it was paying out, um what was what, was, what did I get for the cotton? Was it one three or something, wasn't it? Yeah, one three. So I went on to Western Wilds because I'm, I thought I'm sure on Western Wilds the price was different. And like I said, now there, there's the price fluctuations for seasons. One thousand five hundred and one is the top is saying there. So when I checked it on um, on Western Wilds, it was paying two thousand four hundred and something, both on normal economy, and the top price on that on this fluctuations went up to over three thousand for a thousand liters. Why is it so different from map to map? I, I don't know, is that set by the map maker? I thought it was a kind of generic across the board thing. Um, I suppose maybe because cotton's not supposed to be done up here, so that may be why, potentially. Um, wood chips, 174 for 1,173. Saskatoon, if I sent them off, 204. But I'm pretty sure the wood pellets, there you go, once converted, 2,469 if I send them off, 2,398 if I sell them at the sell everything. So well worth doing. I haven't checked the recipe actually, I can't remember what it was. I think we lose a little bit, don't we? Maybe. I don't know if it's me, but whether I'm, whether I'm just misremembering. Oh, I'm sure. Did I do poplars on six ashes? I'm trying to think what maps I've done poplars on. And I only seem to recall that, again, the yields on these have been a lot higher. But maybe not. I think we offload in here, don't we? So we want to do pellets. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. And we're off. Right. Some more done. I'm sure I've got a bigger field of them. 
or a lot more of them as we move up here. This was just by the side of the road, wasn't it? But I've got a field to the right and as we move up as well, past the train track, we've got a load more, haven't we? So. See what we end up with, I suppose. More of the same. Can't recommend this highly enough. It's a weapon.
that's it. That's the last of it cut. Um, I'm try I said this earlier. I'm trying to remember, and I'm pretty sure on FS22. Bear in mind, with what a year and a half, a year and a half into it being out. This is the first time I've um, done poppers on FS22. Sure is, and I'm pretty sure from what I ended up with, bearing in mind all of what we harvested, that just the same as with um, trees, the fact they cut back on the amount of wood chips you get and the amount of literage you get from trees with FS22, which they definitely did, um, I'm, they've done the same with poplars. Because I've done poplar harvest before on other maps and on six ashes I didn't have big fields and I had poplars and I did all right out of them. Um, this we've ended up with 173,000 litres off of all of that. Doesn't seem like a lot to me. Anyway, what I've decided to do, rather than have to muck around like I did on Griffin, is I'm going to put these onto selling. So I think I've got one there already. So if you haven't seen them, that's what they look like. If you didn't watch my Griffin Indiana, that's what these look like. Oh, so this is cookie cap so um, perfect for this area you can burn them on wood burning stoves and stuff like that so and the price is good because we're into November November December winter time generally speaking the prices go up for wood pellets and that kind of stuff so that's all set to selling we're going to take the trailer back over here drop it off for the pickup and then I'm going to take the harvester back what I am also going to do because we're going to head back up to the farm um, I just want to like I say there's moving forward all of this can continue all this could continue all this will continue whatever, however you want to look at it um, it depends if you believe in quantum dimensionality if you do any decision I make now is a branch this now will continue no not that one that one um, but the new version will also continue, it will splinter, it depends. So, yeah, this farm will carry on in whatever capacity. But what I want to do is have a... I'm going to probably go and grab the horse, actually. I'm going to go and grab King Charles III. And we're going to have a bit of a ride round and just kind of look at what we've done. I mean, realistically, look at what we've done. Those two fields, since I did that potato harvest way back, I didn't do anything with them. In all honesty, I forgot they were there. I did all the grass work, all the verges, all the mowing jobs. I did. I mean, I've lost count of how many times I mowed all of my fields and the verges and all the stuff like that. We've got the milk bottle factory in, selling bottled milk. That's all growing well. Going well. We did the seed production at the start, which didn't go as well. We had a couple of issues, but that was all good. Take that back there. I'll go back and grab the pickup. Awesome bit of kit, love that. So yeah, I'll go grab the pickup and then what I'll do. Oh, actually, you know what I need to while I'm here? I'll see if I can hook up to it and I'll take it with me. I'll go to here and go to here. That'll do nicely. Go with standard three. Kite. I don't believe it is this. Okay, we'll. How oh, we'll buy it? Why not? Oh, I've just realised because I've done a car hit, so I'm not going to be able to get up to the back of those trailers. I'll come back for a little while. I'm going to need that. That's important. So I'm going to go and grab the pickup. I'll see you back up at the farm. We'll have a whiz round. I have to say, I think I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it on here. I've, I've, it's been successful. We've done well out of it. But I think I'm definitely at that point. I'm going to roll into another season. 
and I did the I did the crop swathing. I had to go with that. I know there's other stuff. I know there's um, what was it? Bear and Papa messaged me when this had an update. Had an, another crop added in. Oh, my mind's gone blank now as to what it was. Uh, that should be no. I was right on that one. Go back up to here. Green feed oats. That was it. So you could do green feed oats as well, um, which I didn't do. But we did some flax, we did some peas, we did some lentils, we did some crop swathing, we did sorghum, we did barley, we did wheat, we did cotton, um, all the straw collection. We ran the straw production. We did the straw to manure, manure to fertiliser. We made a fortune in fertiliser. So you know what, I might as well drive up there actually, while we're doing it. And considering we started off, I know, I know it didn't go down too well. When I bought that um, first tractor and it was like 60 grand, and it was that um, the first case I got, but it was like 600 horsepower because I jumped up horsepower very very quickly but I was looking more at price and I keep saying the best the, people like to see a gradual increase in what you do and generally speaking the, the horsepower goes up with the money so the more money you spend the better horsepower more horsepower I always try and look for like I always say best bang for your buck so if you can get high horsepower for not much money why not it gives you more options earlier on um and we started off with was that field or that field over there i mean we we just started off tiny we had the land rover we had a small trailer on the back didn't we we had the parker gravity wagon we had the straw production here the manure production still got all those bales I mean we've got stuff stacked up racked up and everything's good to go I'm at that point where I could do some more mowing I could do some more grass work I could probably do some more hay could do some more grass moving forward we put the pigs in we put the cows in the sheep in honey we've been producing um, we've got the spinnery we've been producing fabric the greenhouses and then we did the chickens which was you know We've done a lot. We've we've achieved a lot. I like it when you kind of decide, okay, it's time to move on, and the stuff you kind of get not bogged down with, but you're doing day in day out. You know, you're kind of focused on, okay, today I need to get this done, this done, this done. If I'm going to skip ahead to the next harvest over the next couple of months, two, three, four months, I've got to make sure I keep up with animal feed, making sure everything's cleared out that needs to be cleared out. Otherwise, the pallets build up unless you set them all to sale or whatever. Um, egg boxes and more pallets you can't and the same with the milk they have to be cleared out and have to be taken off somewhere else you can't just put those directly to sell they have to be actually actually transported i've got weeds in all the fields that, that are ready to go again but then as soon as you seed you'll get rid of all those we bought bigger and bigger fields you know we, we own maybe just under a quarter of the map now the cows reproduced we're producing a ton of slurry a ton of manure We've got loads going on. 20,000 chickens. We had our sunflower contractor out to the right of here, which is how we started off buying this plot of land. Running sunflowers for us. More storage space. Three harvesters we switched up to three harvesters. Slurry tank. Actually, most of this I would have driven around now rather than using the horse actually might as well drive around then don't want to disturb the sheep do we we will be coming back here in a moment though the open gardens the multi-fruit greenhouses bale and pallet storage out there that's got a load in as well because we hit that limit these are pretty much cleared out i've got three cotton pallets sitting there that need to be cleared and then the farmyard itself oh yeah not forgetting the horse stable we put in bought the other farm we've got another shelter over there for our um our trident our case trident 
we built up a machinery from just a Land Rover. And then here in the yard. I say yard, I mean, we kind of left it as grassy as we could really. We started with the concept, that building and these silos that were here. And we took the silos out, we got floodlights in, forage storage, a little production building. We got a few bits and bobs going on there. Tarvix ration production going on there. Actually, that's full. That needs to be just turned off for the time being. But that's all still chugging away. That's, that keeps topping up to 200,000 litres, which I keep using for the cows, which is absolutely fantastic. Our tool station, our lime production, which worked out absolutely brilliantly. That's full. 100,000 litres of lime sat there. So the point where I was putting lime into storage, our fertiliser production, our storage silos, our production greenhouses that are over there, we've ended up with in here, I mean straw from the last lot I did, we're up to 1.7 million litres in here, we've got hay stored in here, 431,000 litres of sorghum from the harvest, we've still got stones, all the, all the rock picking I did, I forgot about that, the weeding, the rock picking, um, so we've got 266,000 litres of stone sitting in here, so if I run that lime production I can just keep topping it up now for a while, I won't have to worry too much about that. Sunflower, 119,000 litres we've got from our Sunflower contractor. Canola, 91,000 litres. We've got a whole load of stuff stored in there. The fish, forgot all about the fish. Yeah. Now fish, I switched it off after a while because it was producing so many. And I think, what did this cost us? Was it 20 grand? It wasn't a lot of money. And it takes 4,000 litres of each of the products. And that paid for itself in no time whatsoever. But it was just to make a bit different, something interesting to do. We did a lot of landscaping. We filled in all the, the ditches, remember, on all the fields here. We did all the drainage ditches and the stuff over here, the washouts. We put in drain tile. This, I said about, I was very happy with the pigs. They're doing well, well. Feed mixer. Now, the problem I have got, that one folded down no problem at all. Um, this, these three, I've got like 300,000, 300,000, 300 odd litres each, 505 litres, that one's got 399, it won't let me fold them because they're still cropping them, so they won't fit under the door there. This one is the one that's frustrated me, 8,400 litres, but it won't let me unload a partial pallet, or it hadn't done anyway, I'll double check because if it does, pallet, bale, should I say. Uh, where do we want to go to? No, still won't. That's alright. Oh uh, yeah, the storage that I put in here, or this, this little building. With our Case 9380. Our Trident with the fertiliser and spreader back. We've got the big old Seed Hawk, we got that. Oh, that's um, had a bit of a wander in there, isn't it? DB120. We've got the step deck, the lorry, we've got the, the larger tanker further over. <sighs> it's been fun. Long, cold winters with very, very deep snow. We've got on the wrong side there. So, bear with me a minute. I'm going to go down to the store and pick up that little trailer. As I'm driving back up here, I just had a sudden thought. Look, 1,115,000. And with what's left, as I said, with how much money we made doing the fertiliser, with the amount of manure the cows are producing, the amount of fertiliser I've got in storage, I'm pretty sure it's full. I want to say, is it 500,000 litres? How much is in that? Let's go down to here. Will it show me on there, my solid fertiliser? It should do, shouldn't it? Oh no, that's just what's in the silo. Well, we've got 140,000 litres in the silo. Um, but in the actual production itself, that's full. I don't doubt, if we sold all that again... Actually, thinking about it, let's have a look. With about a million, we own all of that. We own that. How much was that one? 579 grand. That... 
97, that 116. So, I mean, all this bit here, that's all owned by um, the municipality. Well, it's showing in green, but we had that problem, didn't we? So it's showing us mine, but it's owned by the municipality. So looking at the two little fields down there, the field there we bought, 48, 49, 50, all of that, or these plots anyway, we've got to own over a quarter of the map. Not quite half, I don't think, but I have to say, we've done all right. Oh, that's kind of weird as well. Oh, spooky chills. Look how much money we've got left. 322,000. I arrive with 300. That's a nice way to um, to bookend it. Right, let's open that up. I know people worry about this. Oh, it's it. oh, there we go. So we need to make sure we get the right one. Age 27 months. Age 9 months. Age 14 months. There we go. Select. Move to trailer. We have Jeremy. I know people worry. When I leave maps, I leave Jeremy behind and people say, what happened to him? Where's Jeremy? Jeremy's coming with me. Don't you worry. So I have to say, I, I know I've said it already, I know I've said it repeatedly, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I, most Let's Plays, most maps I play on, you get so familiar with it. When you first do a map tour, you kind of arrive and you have a look around the map and you're not sure where anything is and you, you're finding new routes to places and you have to keep checking the map to find places. And after a while, you kind of get to that point where it becomes second nature and very familiar. And I've always found when you go from iterations from FS15 to 17 to 19 to 22, when maps come from previous versions and get brought out, some people are a bit like, oh, we want new maps, we don't want ones that are just rehashed old ones. But I always like that, especially if it's one you've done a Let's Play on. There's that deep feeling of familiarity and it and it, almost comfort. You kind of go back on and think, oh, wow, there's that lovely feeling of, I remember doing this and this and this, you know, it's brilliant. And that's what happens when you do something like that. It's very cool. South Sask Modding and BC Beulah Farm. Brilliant job. Brilliant job. Loved it. A lovely Canadian welcome. We've done all right, and as I said, whoever comes in now to either buy the farm or run it as a farm manager on my behalf, whichever way, they're going to do all right. I just wanted to double check to make sure. Yeah, look at that. thousand in each. <laughs> Loving it. So we now bid it farewell. With Jeremy in tow, our trusty Land Rover that we arrived with, 300,000 in the bank, which is what we arrived with. Actually I think we might be bang on 300, so we're 22 grand up. Am I going to take that with me to whichever, wherever I go next from here? Carpathian will continue. Because that's a separate entity. They're different, you know, completely different style of what I'm doing and stuff. But um, that will continue. I love it. So, we are literally heading off into the sunset. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I hope you've enjoyed the series. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>